say. Mr. Speaker, in um, moving uh, this, uh, this bill, uh, I'd just like to just to uh, outline uh, some background to it, but also what the purpose of the bill is. The purpose of the bill is essentially to protect the rail corridor between Gawler and Anguston, which is usually referred to as the Barossa Rail Corridor. Uh, and that, uh, the purpose of, of, of protecting that rail corridor is to enable it in the future, if the opportunity arises, to actually um, uh, commence a Brossa tourism train service. And that, uh, um, as a result of some work I've been doing in the Brossa over the last four to five, well, maybe six months now, it has become clear that there is some uh, support amongst the business sector, but also the community, that uh, they would like to explore the feasibility of reintroducing uh, some sort of model of, of, of a train, uh, tourism train service. And I say a tourism train service because uh, what has been actually looked at is the possibility of having some sort of heritage train service or a, a service which actually um, brings tourists uh, to the area but also through the area. And that is not to be confused with a passenger rail service, which is actually a very different beast. Uh, Mr. S Mr Speaker, uh, what the uh, uh, bill does is, is three things. Uh, it basically restricts the government from actually um, selling off any part of uh, the, the actual rail corridor to any third parties. Uh, I am aware at this, at this time that that rail corridor, like many other rail corridors throughout the state, is under the care and control uh, of, um, I think it's called now One Rail. Uh, Formerly referred to, formerly known as uh, Genesee Wyomi, who actually have care control of that under a lease arrangement, which goes back some years prior to this prior to this government. Now, the actual terms and conditions of that lease at this point in time are not known. Uh, what I do know uh, uh, is that those terms and conditions have been amended since uh, we were in government, uh, and I know that because part of the leased area has been removed from the lease and taken back by the government. Uh, in government hands to enable a roundabout to be built at what's referred to in the Bryce as Cromus Crossing. Now, uh, as a result of the uh, roundabout being built at Cromus Crossing, uh, part of the railway track was dug up and, and therefore there's a break in the line. Uh, interesting to note, uh, there's another, uh, another um, uh, intersection just further north and a roundabout, which was actually built during our period, uh, but we were able actually to preserve the actual rail line as part of that uh, roundabout as well. It is of great um, controversy in the Brossa that the actual uh, rail, the rail lines, the rail tracks were not maintained or retained as part of the Chroma Crossing development. There is a view that it was possible, and there's also been a view expressed that it may be possible to reinstate the train lines should uh, should a case be made uh, that the tourism a tourism train service would be feasible in the longer term, and so what this bill does prevents the government uh, this government any government from actually uh, removing uh, or selling off some land. Uh, secondly, it actually and so it, it defines what the corridor is. Essentially, the corridor is between Gawler and and Anguston. Even though there's no rail line between New Europe and Anguston, the belief is that the corridor should be protected in some way and that, that would leave the options open in the future for any other transport systems as well. The other part is that um, it, puts, it makes it a requirement if the corridor is to be developed in any way, uh, whether it's going to be you know, with, with the bridges which go um, above the rail corridor or in the other if infrastructure is to be made, it would actually require the consent of this parliament. In other words, the people would know uh, and they would need the consent of this parliament should do actually that corridor be affected in a way which would prevent uh, a train line, a train service being reinstated. And so this is really just a, a holding mechanism uh, to say that until that uh, feasibility is undertaken uh, and uh, we actually make some sort of final decision as to whether tourism train service is viable or not, that the, the, the line and the corridor should be retained intact. And part of that is because we do not know the status of, of where the lease arrangements are at the moment. As I said, 
we know the lease arrangements were changed recently uh, by virtue of the fact that the, uh, the Chromis Crossing, uh, which was part of the uh, uh, lease arrangements, had to be amended, had to amend the lease to actually hand back part of that lease to the, to the state government to enable that roundabout to be built. And this is not an argument against the roundabout. It's clearly the roundabout was required. What it's just saying is we don't want that to happen again where further parts of the track are dug up for development purposes. So that's what the bill does in, in essence. Uh, in terms of the, the background to it, the issue of a tourism train service has been one which has been discussed for many years. In fact, until around about 2002, at least, as far as I can recall, the, the, the train service did run because I know in 2002 uh, Her Majesty the Queen visited Gawler and also the Brossa. She did. I met Her Majesty. I was fortunate to meet Her Majesty. Uh, and at, uh, at the Gawler station, I was mayor of the town at the time, so I welcomed her to, to the to the, to, to the our wonderful town, uh, spent some time with Her Majesty, uh, and then she went on to the Brossa. And she actually arrived, she arrived to Gawla on the Brossa, the wine train uh, to Gawla. And so uh, there's certainly a, lot, a strong affinity and a desire by the community uh, to have its rail, uh, rail services reinstated, albeit in this case for the tourism purposes only. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, uh, I think uh, one of the things we, we, do, we are doing to ensure that we, we go into this matter with our eyes wide open is that I've established a task force uh, made up of some very important and prominent and important to the sense that they, they, their roles in the community uh, uh, may mean they have extensive networks and also they understand the brossa very well. For example, the, the task force uh, has uh, Peter Joy, who is, a pre who is the chair of the Brossa Wine and Grape Association. So he would actually have networks of all the, the wineries, the grape growers, an important part of, of the Brossa, and he would actually have an understanding how a tourism train service would actually be of benefit to, to that particular part of, uh, of, the, of the business community. Uh, John Durden. John Durden is involved with the uh, 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 tourism Brossa. Uh, and again, that, that goes way beyond just grape growers and, and wineries, but all the people involved in the tourism industry. And so he has extensive networks and knowledge on what the benefits could be, also the costs could be, uh, of this uh, wine train. Mr Speaker, it's important that uh, we do a proper and thorough feasibility study uh, to make sure that um, this wine, um, proposed wine train would work. Uh, this is what we are doing now is different to what's previously happened. There have been a number of, of reports which have been prepared on this matter. The, the most recent in expression of interest uh, uh, undertaken by the government, which has not had the confidence of the people or of, of, the, of the Barossa because it has been piecemeal and often they have been called for a purpose not to actually um, in, uh, to inform but rather to, pr to prevent the train service. Bim Lange, the, the mayor of the of the of the Brossa Council, is a member of the task force. As is Karen Redman. I think uh, a tourism train would benefit not only the Brossa, but but certainly could actually be a great benefit to the town of Gawler, uh, particularly if it was to run run between Gawler and the Brossa. Uh, Rod Hook, uh, the former CEO of the Department of Trans uh, Planning, Transport, Infrastructure, is is a member of the task force, and he represents in part, and I say represent in part because uh, Rod is an independent person, but he also works for John Gieber. Uh, John Gieber is, is the owner of Chateau Tananda, a very uh, successful um, winery, uh, and, that, uh, uh, and, John, and Rod brings a lot of actually experience. I mean, his experience on this matter would be you know, uh, unparalleled to anybody else, because he worked for the department, he understands um, how, how to cost projects, he understands the, the challenges facing this project, etc. And he brings, he does bring an a strong independent view to that, to this task force. As all members of this task force, the members of the task force have all been selected because they neither have either have either very strong pro or anti views about the tourism proposed tourism train, but bring with them a, a, a background and experience which is useful. Uh, Mr Ivan Venning, the former member for Schubert, uh, 
and is a member of the task force. Uh, he'd be probably one of the people who's got very strong views about the, the tourism train, who are very pro, but also he's, he was a member for some, uh, probably about 20 years or so, uh, member for Schubert, and therefore has a great knowledge of the history of, of the train and the previous services, but also the community's views uh, about the service. Bob Sampson, who, who's involved with the National uh, Rail, Rail Museum, he brings with to the, to the task force a lot of expertise in regulatory issues. And uh, he understands you know, the difference between regulating a passenger train service to a heritage train service, but also the extensive processes involved in trying to get a licence to operate such a train service. And he brings a very strong, uh, uh, strong knowledge of, of that process, having worked in, I think, both uh, A&R and also South Australian Railways. I think he's worked in both railways. Uh, Bob has, but um, and he's also uh, his, his input is very valuable to the task force. Uh, Marie Louise Lees, Marie Louise Lees just recently um, joined the task force, and she uh, represents the Southern Barossa region. The Southern Barossa region uh, is an area which sometimes um, believe that they're, they're left out of the Barossa, not considered part of the Barossa, but they certainly are part of the Barossa, and that uh, there are quite a few commercial, business, and community interests. Uh, which I represented through um, Murray Louise Lees. In fact, at the recent uh, task force meeting on Monday night, she tabled a document of all the various businesses and interests in the southern Barossa which could benefit from, from a tourism train, and it's quite extensive. So there are, there are uh, enormous amounts of benefits to be found. Uh, Rolf Binder is the chair of the RDA. The RDA is very strong on economic development. Uh, but also connecting that to community. And so Rolf brings with him not only the business acumen of, of Rolf Binder Wines, which he owned until recent times, which I think I understand that he's now sold to another party, uh, but Rolf brings not only the, the, the business skill, uh, but also the, um, the, the networks which the RDA has uh, in the, in the Brosser area. So that's the, we have a very strong task force. Uh, the task force meetings are very rigorous. And, and robust, which they should be, and the task force at the moment is preparing a, um, a document which could become a project brief to actually uh, undertake uh, a, a feasibility study. Now, uh, it's no secret, it's been public knowledge that um, uh, should my side of politics win uh, government at the next election, uh, we don't have to win Schubert to win government. Um, that was that was for a few months, that was a good idea. Uh, that would have been a good idea. That's not going to be the case now. Uh, and, and, uh, but uh, what, I, what I can say, if should we win government, we've committed ourselves to fund the feasibility study, and this is a thorough feasibility study, which will be, and will be, the oversight of the study will not be some public servant in the Department of Transport at the direction of a minister or a senior public servant, but it will be a task force uh, made up of local people. The local people, which I've just mentioned, will oversee this process. So. Uh, it, and, and we'll have a lot of confidence. And the idea of having this feasibility is that the outcomes of this feasibility will be accepted by the community and the business sector. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, um, the task force has it, the task before the task force includes the following things: uh, to look at the range of benefits for the Bross and Gore region from a tourism train. Uh, importantly, how it's congruent with the Brossa brand. The Brossa brand is a premium brand in tourism. And we, want, we don't want to detract from that and how it can actually add to that brand and therefore the service that you'd provide would complement that and not detract from that. Uh, but also look at the management of the rail corridor um, should this go ahead. It also looks at, the, very importantly, the potential for private sector investment which could be unlocked with the tourism train in that area and what role the private sector would play. Uh, also look at the issue of Crimes Crossing, whether it can actually, the line could be reinstated and whether uh, the model of the train service would be from Gawla to, to Tananda or Gawla to Newry and beyond. Uh, there's a whole range of other things, but in essence, it's designed to ensure that uh, the train, any reintroduced train service would be sustainable and one there for the long term, a benefit to the browser. But to be able to do that, Mr Speaker, we actually need a rail corridor. And the only way we're gonna, we can guarantee to have a rail corridor is to pass this bill which protects the rail corridor from any other um, actions by this government to dig up the train line. I would, um, with those comments, Mr Speaker, I would certainly ask the House to support the bill. 
the chairman of debate, uh, the member for New